the crisis. Let's get into some statistics. Over, you know, over 20 million kids live without a father in the home. 20 million kids. It's f-ing nuts. And 40% are born into single parent households, with 80% of those being the household at over 80% being headed by a woman. Positive male role model leading the family who's intentional and purpose driven in the freaking house. Now that's a f-ing crisis. This second segment is very closely tied into it. And this second segment is now the crisis of masculinity. And they're really the the state and the nature of of modern masculinity. What is this crisis? Let's, Let's dive deeper into it. Like I said, this second segment is closely related to the first segment. This is now, let's go into really the crisis. And even though that the the state of nature of modern masculinity it was already going into the crisis, but let's just dive a little deeper into it and take it to the next level. So what exactly constitutes a weak man today? Now, oh, and we went into a little bit in that first segment, but a weak man is someone who's settled into mediocrity and isn't willing to strive for improvement. That's the problem. He avoids challenges. He fears discomfort. He prefers a life of ease and superficial fulfillment and quick fixes. This kind of man has lost his lost the drive for growth and resilience. He doesn't have any resilience. He, he doesn't have the ability to deal with shit coming his way in the real world because like we said in that first segment, he's got no real, he's lived his life through a screen. There's no real life experience. He expects everything entitled and everything to be a quick fix and instant gratification. And when we talk about, all right, the crisis, let's get into some statistics. Over, you know, over 20 million kids live without a father in the home. 20 million kids. It's fucking nuts. And 40% are born into single parent households, with 80% of those being the household at over 80% being headed by a woman. So break those numbers down that if 40% are born into a single parent home and then eight, about 80% of that is led by women, that means there's only a couple left that are actually in a house with a mother and a father in the family. And then, all right, so that leads like one, three or four, two, three, four, whatever, how many ever left over. Out of those now we go into the next level. That was just the fatherless homes. Don't forget, then there's the lack of presence of fathers in the home, which is like another 80% are just lacking presence in the home of those that are actually there. You're talking about one in 10, probably less than that, probably less than 10% there where there's a positive male role model leading the family who's intentional and purpose-driven in the freaking house. Now that's a fucking crisis if I ever heard one. And the effects of, let's go back to the first stage, the fatherless homes. The effects of fatherless homes are, Across the board, there have been so many studies on it and so many statistics. Boys without fathers are more likely to face unemployment, commit crimes, struggle with drug abuse, alcoholism, suicide. Fathers play a crucial and a critical role in a child's development, both boys and girls. That's probably especially boys, but really both when it comes down to it. And their absence contributes to 20, again, 20 million kids living without a father in the home, 40% being born into single parent homes, which 80% are by women. Then you add in an over 50% divorce rate. So those ones that were born into uh, not a single family home, now there's a divorce rate of that 50%. So, and we talked about in the first segment, even strong, fierce, capable alpha women will not be able to fully raise a boy to be a man. There needs to be some mentorship from a man in that in that kid's life. And and all these statistics doesn't matter for race or religion or income. There's a greater chance when there's a lack of, not a father in the home or an absent father in the home, a greater chance for that young man to be unemployed. There's a greater chance for teenage pregnancy, for all kinds of abuse. 
for neglect, for going to prison, for being a high school dropout, for becoming a criminal, for violence, for depression, for drug use, for worse grades in school, not graduating high school. Kids with fathers in the home or men specifically with fathers in the home are twice as likely to graduate high school and college. And by 30, by 30 years old, fatherless boys are twice as likely to have spent time in jail. And that's just fatherless boys, but I think it, it, think about what the number would be for fatherless plus the lack of presence of a father in the home. I wasn't from in a fatherless home, but there was no presence of a positive male role model in the home. And I did spend time in jail. So if fatherless boys are twice as likely to spend time in jail, think about if you add in the, the other percent of which 80% of those families that are not fatherless homes are lacking the presence of male leadership. Shit. Yeah, you go to three, forget about twice as likely. They're three, four, five, 10 times as likely to spend time in jail because that's the majority of the men out there. There's a study even done that even if there were fathers present in a neighborhood, they did this in some inner city, small little neighborhoods within the city, that if there were just a few solid fathers, male leadership that kind of stayed tight in the community, they were kind of fathers to the neighborhood, those neighborhoods were safer, they were wealthier, there was better health of the entire community just by having some father figures in that community. Here's another, another statistic that's fucking mind-blowing, that 20,000 kids reach the age of 18 years old Every year in the United States, I, this, I think it's the United States, it might be the world, but I think it's just the United States, 20,000 kids turn the age of 18 every year before ever being adopted. Now, these are kids that are in foster homes or group homes or whatever it is, orphanage, whatever, whatever it's called these days, 20,000 kids each year turn 18. That means they're just pushed out into the world without being adopted, without ever having a family. Now, they're expected to go be leaders and be productive in society when they've just been bounced around and unwanted their entire life. Think about it. It's fucking nuts. The st- these statistics are crazy. And this, this part of this crisis is, is just because you have kids doesn't make you a father. And just because you don't have kids doesn't mean you shouldn't be fathering other men and other people in your community. Father is a verb, something you should be doing as a man, as a leader to fight this crisis on masculinity and manhood. And I have did an entire episode on kind of the absent dads. We call the Disneyland dads that are just not present in the home. They're tired, they're lazy, they're burned out, they're overwhelmed, they're stressed, they have anxiety, they're lacking discipline and direction. There's no clarity or confidence and no fucking courage. They're just zero purpose, zero presence, and no intentionality in anything they do. That is the lack. That is a father that's in the home that is not leading the family the way they should. And that is the crisis of masculinity. That is the real fatherless homes and lack of presence of a father in the home is the real pandemic and crisis in this country. Not the politics, not war, not any of this other stuff. That is the real crisis in this damn country. And a weak man is just someone, again, who settle, has settled for his flaws and isn't willing to make any effort to strive for more because he has fear of, of dealing with tough situations or what if things don't go his way. They're used to just getting their own way like a little toddler that cries for a fucking baba whenever they want it. And a weak, soft man has accepted ease and mediocrity and a lack of fulfillment lack of enthusiasm, and a lack of happiness. He stopped trying to get better. He is settling for good enough. He is settling for just what is, for just what's there. He's settling for what's there and not what, what the possibilities are, what the potential is, what, his, what, what he actually has in himself as a power of a man. And this, this modern man, this crisis that we're in, this modern man needs to rewire his freaking brain and his entire mindset and thought process because we've been programmed by society, by social media, by the news and all this other shit and and this instant gratifying culture to be laid back and careless and just worry about our freaking selves. Men today are weaker than ever, not just physically, 
but emotionally and mentally also. And mentally, I mean, like I said, in the end of that first segment, they are getting stupider. Men are getting stupider. And if you don't intentionally go out and work on yourself and self-master your own personal development constantly, I have to constantly soak and bury myself in books so I don't fall into the trap out there on so- the social media and all that shit out there. That's just half, 90% of that shit makes you fucking stupider. Ease and comfort makes you stupider, makes you lose that edge. There's no sense of confidence in today's man, in, in young men today. No self-esteem whatsoever in, in these young men. They are just fucking lost. They lack a father figure in their life or a positive male role model, a purpose-driven man leading them. So they turn to the fucking internet as their like escape, their refuge. And sure, there is some obviously good content on the internet. You need to sift through the bullshit to get to the good stuff. But it's the good stuff is usually disregarded for the bullshit because the, the good stuff is too hard. This work we're talking about is hard to hear. I mean, not just hard to hear because my annoying fucking voice and language, bad language and all that, but it's hard work. Men's work is hard work. Men's work is in the fucking pain and suffering. And most men don't want to deal with that. They rather just deal with scrolling and watch the stupid videos on the internet and all the talk shit and the gossip and the bullshit. So... What caused these weak men? We already said lack of positive male role models. You could go into history and talk about where where it really started shifting, probably somewhere around World War II when like there was like 65 million just deaths in World War II. We learned that from actually Call of Duty, right? Isn't that where we learned it from? Call of Duty. Yes, video games are very educational. So 65 million deaths in World War II. Think about that. That's a lot of dead men. A lot of dead fathers, husbands, brothers, leaders, future leaders that are dead. And then think about the ones that weren't. That's if 65 million were dead. There's tens of millions of other men that were involved in it that were sent off and shipped off for years and didn't come back the same. There are psychological scars and physical wounds and, and whatever else that kind of, these were the leaders of families that came back and and. They didn't probably realize the impact it's going to have on their their life and the mental health and physical health that the women, when they're gone, the women were forced to take over the work and that being the head of the household and the whole in, the industrial revolution and the and the women women's rights and all these other things that led to women almost being forced to and need to. And it shifted into like men being so weak nowadays that women are involuntarily, they don't want that job of running the household and being the man of the household, but the woman has to be the man of the household because someone has to be the man. And if the man's not being the man, the woman is forced to be the man. And then they wonder why it's all freaking colliding and, and, and friction and stress. And then divorce rates at an all-time high. Suicide rates, all-time high. Testosterone levels, all-time low. Fatherless homes, all-time high. Absent fathers in the home, all-time high. The amount of people actually having kids is at an all-time low. These men that are not having kids, we mentioned the first segment, whether they're afraid or they don't have any purpose or higher calling, or they're just not interested in it. They don't want to be responsible for anyone outside of themselves because they're too far on the spectrum of selfish. Part of this crisis has become made us selfish individuals. You can't be too far end of either end of the spectrum between selfless and selfish. So men living for themselves with no higher calling, no purpose driven men living for nothing outside of themselves, just themselves, that's on the selfish side. But then you have the selfless side, those Mr. Nice guys who just put everyone above themselves, they put themselves last so they're not even in a position because they don't take care of themselves enough to even be a quality leader and a purpose-driven man. So they're so far on the end of selfless. The self-symmetry of man comes together when the selfish and the selfless combine somewhere in the middle and mold into a purpose-driven man. That's where we need to be. And we'll get into that more in those later segments when we get into the reclaiming of masculinity. And we'll get more into the technology side of things. That's, of course, part of the crisis that has its own section that we're going to go over. And this is why I have my screen here because there's different things I want to do on here. There we go. And uh, so there's going to be a whole separate section on technology, but I don't even want to get into it here because it's, it's totally separate. But it has to do with overall instant gratification. There's no patience. There's no resilience. There's no conversation skills. There's hard work is, is frowned upon. 
suffering and hardship is not endurable by today's man. They don't they feel the need to earn shit. They're just entitled to it. And then, of course, the internet and social media. All this leads to entitlement. Leads to them thinking they deserve and have earned and should get because they want, because they feel like they should get something for nothing. Without doing the extra work, without going the extra mile, without doing the work of man, they think there's they should get something for nothing. And that kind of rounds out the crisis of masculinity right now. That's kind of segment two of you. 